Now let's get started. This is a nylon braided rope that I got from the local hardware store. I taped it up and burnt the end with a lighter to get some of that frayed rope off of there. I like using the uh, nylon braided for learning knots because it's very soft and pliable and it's easy to tie knots with. So the first knot I want to show you is called the bowline. Hold the rope in your left hand with about a foot hanging down. Go around the back and up into this opening and then pull the rope toward you and then down so the knot folds. Then hold it in your left hand and take your finger and just open up that hole a little bit so you can clearly see there's a hole there. Go around the back of the rope up into this opening, back into that hole and pull up on these two lines as you pull down on this one. That's called a bowline. Once again, hold the rope in your left hand with about a foot hanging down. Go around and then into this opening. Pull the rope toward you and down so the knot folds. Hold the rope in your hand and open up that hole a little bit so you can clearly see there's a nice hole there. Go around the back and up into this opening, back into that hole, and pull up on these two lines as you pull down on that. To learn the bowling, you need to build muscle memory. And to do that, you need to practice every day. It's better to practice for 10 minutes every day than to practice for an hour one day and then not practice the next day. Keep a length of rope around and you can practice almost anywhere. You could practice sitting on the couch watching television. Practice so much that you get comfortable tying the knot in different positions. Learn to tie the knot so you're not even looking at it. Learn to tie the knot so it's very small. Once you're comfortable with that, you can challenge yourself and try to tie the knot behind your back. Once you're comfortable doing that, you're ready to move on to the next knot. But make sure you can tie this second nature before you move on because the next knot I want to show you is a variation of this knot. And if you can't tie this one easily, you're not going to be able to tie the next one. Now let's say we want to tie our rope onto this object. Take your rope and go around it. Take the short end of the rope and go over the long end of the rope and tie your bowline right here. Now you could pull the long end and the bowline runs down the rope and locks in on the object. That's called the running bowline. Once again, put your rope around the object. Short end goes over the long end and tie your bowline back in here. Pull the long end and the bowline runs down and locks in on that object. Now let's assume we want to tie these two objects together. So take your rope and go around and right here we're going to make a loop and we're going to twist the loop once and then twist it one more time. Put your fingers through the loop and grab the center of the rope and pull it down. That's called a Dutchman. Then take the end of your rope and put it through the Dutchman and pull it back the other way and you're ready to start tightening down on your rope. Now what this Dutchman does exactly is it simulates what a pulley does. It's almost exactly the same thing. A pulley is a simple machine, and it's called a simple machine because it creates a mechanical advantage. What that means is that by pulling on this rope, 
I'm gaining more at this end than I'm actually pulling. If I pull about 15 pounds here, I can expect to get somewhere around 30 pounds up here. If I was using a pulley instead of the knot, I would get exactly 30 pounds. But because there's a little friction in the knot, I get a little less than 30 pounds. But that's a pretty good mechanical advantage. Let me show you a little more clearly how that works. So now I've hooked up a scale at that end and a scale on this end as well. And you could see that I'm pulling about 15 pounds worth of effort. And that's generating on the other end 27 pounds of pull. And that's a pretty sweet mechanical advantage that I'm getting just from using a rope. Now you've created almost 27 pounds of pull up at the other end. And the challenge becomes to tie this off so you don't lose any of that tension. The way you're going to do that is you're going to take a wrap around the object so you can hold it with just one finger. Now if you can't hold it with one finger because there's too much pull on the rope, take another wrap. And you could take as many wraps as you need to so you get to the point where you can hold it with just one finger. Now we're going to tie this all together using two half hitches. Take your rope, go underneath all three lines, then over the top of all three lines, and into this opening here. And that's called a half hitch. Now an interesting thing happens as I pull this half hitch and these lines come together, I'm going to gain more mechanical advantage up at the other end. So I'm pulling them together and the scale goes up to almost 40 pounds. Now I hold with the two fingers here and I'm going to tie a second hitch exactly the same way underneath all three lines and over the top back into that opening and we pull it good and tight and that locks it all together and you can see I've created almost 40 pounds of pull and initially I only exerted 15 pounds of pull when I started this so that's a pretty good mechanical advantage considering the fact that we're using only a rope these knots are often used for tying things down let's assume this is the roof of your car and this is the rack on the roof of your car and you want to tie this box down to the roof so you put your rope over the object you want to tie down and you can use this system to pull anything down onto something else to tie something down you could tie it down onto a trailer or anywhere you want to tie something down this works great for that this system is also great for pulling things just like the Dutchman simulates the pulley this system simulates a winch and you can use it to pull something in any direction these knots will never fail the rope would break before the knot would slip or fail but they're also great because they untie very easily very simply, the two half hitches come apart because, remember, all the tension is held in the wraps. So the two hi half hitches come apart very easily. You could pull your rope through the Dutchman. That comes apart with just a pull. Pull your bowen back up the other way and peel this loop back and the knot will come right apart for you nice and easily. And that's very important because you want your rope straight and not free and ready for your next project. Just like you learn the bowling and develop that muscle memory, you'll have to do the same with these three knots. You could practice on a table between the legs or even a chair. I flipped this table upside down so I could demonstrate to you how this works. Um, basically, it's the same thing. Tie your running bowling at one end, go around the other leg, tie your Dutchman, Pull it snug. Now be careful you don't pull too much. Because you created a great mechanical advantage using this method, you don't want to pull it so much that you damage the legs or the table. You just want to pull it enough so you can get some tension and practice taking your wrap and tying off with your two half hitches. The object here 
is to get used to tying this and develop the muscle memory. Practice it every day and get used to it. And that's it. The next knot is called the clove hitch. Take your rope and go around the object you want to tie to, underneath your rope, and then over the top, and around the back again, and into this opening here, and pull it tight. That's called the clove hitch. One more time, go around and underneath, and then over the top, and around the back again, and into this opening. That's the clove hitch. Now another quick, easy way to tie the clove hitch, make a loop in your left hand, make a loop in your right hand, put the right hand loop behind the left hand loop, and you could slip it right down, and it's the same knot. Now let's use this clove hitch to help tie these two objects together. Take one end and tie a small bowline in there. Put your clove hitch on the object you're tying to. Hold that piece up there and go over the front and around the back and pull it nice and tight. And then back down the front and around again. Pull that tight. Then one more time around the back. And now you can take a wrap so you don't lose any of the tension. And to finish up, we'll take our rope and we'll put it into the bowline. You could pinch it with a finger so you don't lose your tension. Pull the bowline up. And once again, we're going to take a wrap or two. And then we could finish up by taking the end of the rope and putting back into the same bowline and pull that and you could tie your two half hitches right here pull it away a little bit so you can get your rope behind and you could finish up with your two half hitches and this system works great for tying objects together that you never thought you would be able to tie together if you were ever um, in the woods and you were trying to build a fort or a lean-to and you didn't have a hammer and nails, this works great. You can take a log and hold it up to a tree, tie it up, take the other end, hold that up to another tree and tie it up, and that could be the first beam in the roof of your lean-to. There's a lot of different ways you can use this. The clove hitch is a little bit different from the other knots because the clove hitch will jam. So that doesn't mean it's a bad knot. You just have to be aware of how you use it and where you use it. Don't pull it so tight that you're not going to be able to get it untied. Um, but it's great for certain applications. For example, if you ever tried to put up a tarp and the direction you want to pull the tarp in, there's no rope there, or maybe where the ropes go on your tarp, it's old and torn and the, the, the knot holes are ripped out. Very simply, take your tarp and just bunch it up a little bit. Take your rope and make your clove hitch and you could just slip that clove hitch right over the top of that pull that tight and you could pull your tarp in any direction with the clove hitch if you take some time and get comfortable with these knots you'll find lots of different uses for them use your imagination and you'll use ropes in ways you never thought possible about 15 years ago I was sweeping with this broom and the handle broke off it so I grabbed a piece of rope and less than five minutes I tied it up and now these knots are as tight as they were 15 years ago. Broom's probably going to last another 15 years. So the point is get comfortable with these knots and you'll find that you use them in ways that you never thought possible. By now you've probably started to accumulate a lot of ropes and the best way to keep your ropes organized is to learn how to coil them up. Take your rope in both hands with about a foot hanging down on one side and then roll the rope away from you as you bring it in and make a coil. Measure off another length about the same size, roll the rope to away from you and make the coil. 
Now sometimes if the coils don't go together nicely, you might have to roll it a little more just to make it fit in there nice. So keep going. Make nice, neat, even coils until you get to maybe four feet left. Then put your hand through, take your rope and go around and tighten it up right there. Take a few wraps, three, four, five, however many wraps you need, depending on how much rope you've got left and how much you want to use up. I'm going to take one more wrap and then make a loop. Put your hands through the top and grab that loop. Then take the end of your rope and go into that loop and pull it and that locks it down and hold your coil together. That's a great place to carry your rope from. Never grab your rope from the side or from here. Always grab it from the top and the coil will stay nice and straight. Now if you wanted to make a hook so you could hang it up, instead of finishing up by going through, just make a loop right here and put that into that loop, pull that tight to lock it up, and then one more half hitch. And you've got a nice place to hang up your rope. You could hang all your ropes from the same spot, and they're always ready to go for your next project. Please become a subscriber to my YouTube channel, Ropes Rigging and Trees, and I'll let you know when the next instructional video becomes available.